Alpha, more commonly known today as Alphage, was an Anglo-Saxon bishop of Winchester, later Archbishop of Canterbury. He became an anchorite before being elected abbot of Bath Abbey. His reputation for piety and sanctity led to his promotion to the episcopate and, eventually, to his becoming archbishop. Alpha furthered the cult of Dunstan and also encouraged learning. He was captured by Viking raiders in 1011 during the siege of Canterbury and killed by them the following year after refusing to allow himself to be ransomed. Alpha was canonized as a saint in 1078. Thomas Becket, a later Archbishop of Canterbury, prayed to him just before his own murder in Canterbury Cathedral in 1170. Alpha was born around 953, supposedly in Weston on the outskirts of Bath, and became a monk early in life. He first entered the monastery of Deerhurst, but then moved to Bath, where he became an anchorite. He was noted for his piety and austerity and rose to become abbot of Bath Abbey. The 12th century chronicler, William of Malmesbury recorded that Elfha was a monk and prior at Glastonbury Abbey, but this is not accepted by all historians. Indications are that Elfha became abbot at Bath by 982, perhaps as early as around 977. He perhaps shared authority with his predecessor Esquig after 968. Probably due to the influence of Dunstan, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Elfha was elected Bishop of Winchester in 984, and was consecrated on 19th of October that year. While Bishop he was largely responsible for the construction of a large organ in the cathedral, audible from over a mile away and said to require more than 24 men to operate. He also built and enlarged the city's churches, and promoted the cult of Swithin and his own predecessor, Aethelwold of Winchester. One act promoting Aethelwold's cult was the translation of Aethelwold's body to a new tomb in the cathedral at Winchester, which Elfha presided over on 10th of September 996. Following a Viking raid in 994, a peace treaty was agreed with one of the raiders, Olaf Tryggvason. Besides receiving Danegeld, Olaf converted to Christianity and undertook never to raid or fight the English again. Alpha may have played a part in the treaty negotiations, and it is certain that he confirmed Olaf in his new faith. In 1006, Alpha succeeded Alfric as Archbishop of Canterbury, taking Swithin's head with him as a relic for the new location. He went to Rome in 1007 to receive his pallium, symbol of his status as an archbishop, from Pope John XVIII, but was robbed during his journey. While at Canterbury, he promoted the cult of Dunstan, ordering the writing of the Second Life of Dunstan, which Adelard of Ghent composed between 1006 and 1011. He also introduced new practices into the liturgy, and was instrumental in the White Nagemont's recognition of Wolfsage of Sherborne as a saint in about 1012. Alpha sent Alfric of Encham to Cern Abbey to take charge of its monastic school. He was present at the Council of May 1008 at which Wolfston II, Archbishop of York, preached his Sermo Lupi at Anglos. Castigating the English for their moral failings and blaming the latter for the tribulations afflicting the country. In 1011, the Danes again raided England, and from 8 to 29 September they laid siege to Canterbury. Aided by the treachery of Elfmar, whose life Elfha had once saved, the raiders succeeded in sacking the city. Elfha was taken prisoner and held captive for seven months. Godwin, Leofrun, and the King's Reeve, Elfweird were captured also, but the abbot of St. Augustine's Abbey, Elfemer, managed to escape. Canterbury Cathedral was plundered and burned by the Danes following Elfa's capture. Elfa refused to allow a ransom to be paid for his freedom, and as a result was killed on April 19, 1012 at Greenwich, reputedly on the site of St. Alphege's church. The account of Elfa's death appears in the e-version of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, the raiding army became much stirred up against the bishop. Because he did not want to offer them any money, and forbade that anything might be granted in return for him. Also they were very drunk, because there was wine brought from the south. Then they seized the bishop, led him to their hustings on the Saturday in the octave of Easter, and then pelted him there with bones and the heads of cattle, and one of them struck him on the head with the butt of an axe. So that with a blow he sank down and his holy blood fell on the earth, and sent forth his holy soul to God's kingdom. Alpha was the first Archbishop of Canterbury to die a violent death. A contemporary report tells that Thorkel the Tall attempted to save Alpha from the mob about to kill him by offering everything he owned except for his ship. In exchange for Alpha's life, Thorkel's presence is not mentioned in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, however. Some sources record that the final blow, with the back of an axe, was delivered as an act of kindness by a Christian convert known as Thrum. Alpha was buried in St. Paul's Cathedral. In 1023, 
his body was moved by King Canute to Canterbury, with great ceremony. Thorkel the Tall was appalled at the brutality of his fellow raiders, and switched sides to the English King Athelred the Unready following Elfa's death. A 15th century illuminated manuscript showing Elfa being asked for advice Pope Gregory VII canonized Elfa in 1078, with a feast day of 19th of April. Lefranc, the first post conquest archbishop, was dubious about some of the saints venerated at Canterbury. He was persuaded of Elfa's sanctity but Elfa and Augustine of Canterbury were the only pre-conquest Anglo-Saxon archbishops kept on Canterbury's calendar of saints. Elfa's shrine, which had become neglected, was rebuilt and expanded in the early 12th century under Anselm of Canterbury, who was instrumental in retaining Elfa's name in the church calendar. After the 1174 fire in Canterbury Cathedral, Elfa's remains together with those of Dunstan were placed around the high altar, at which Thomas Becket is said to have commended his life into Elfa's care shortly before his martyrdom during the Becket controversy. The new shrine was sealed in Leed, and was north of the high altar, sharing the honour with Dunstan's shrine, which was located south of the high altar. A life of St. Elfa in prose and verse was written by a Canterbury monk named Osborne, at Lefranc's request. The prose version has survived, but the life is very much a hagiography, many of the stories it contains have obvious biblical parallels, making them suspect as a historical record. In the late medieval period, Elfa's feast day was celebrated in Scandinavia, perhaps because of the saint's connection with Canute. Few church dedications to him are known, with most of them occurring in Canton one each in London and Winchester, as well as St. Alphege's church in Greenwich, a nearby hospital was named after him. In Kent, there are two 12th-century parish churches dedicated to St. Alphege at Seasalter in Canterbury. Reputedly his body lay in these churches overnight on his way back to Canterbury Cathedral for burial. In the town of Solihull in the West Midlands, St. Alphage Church is dedicated to Elfa dating back to approximately 1277. In 1929, a new Roman Catholic church in Bath, the Church of Our Lady and St. Alphage, was designed by Giles Gilbert Scott in homage to the ancient Roman Church of Santa Maria in Cosmedine, and dedicated to Elfa under the name of Alphage. St. George the Martyr with St. Alphage and St. Jude stands in Borough in London. Thanks for watching.